Hello dear friends, this is Shotanik here. I am back once again to discuss the solution of today's position of the day. The diagram is on your screens and it is white to move and mate in three in this position. Well, so you can see that the black thing is stranded in the middle of the board and the five squares adjacent to it are all well guarded. But you have to somehow round it up. You have to deliver checkmate in just three moves. How do you do that? More importantly, how do you approach such a problem? So you have the king on e4 here. And you can see that all the squares immediately adjacent to it are all well guarded. But you have to deliver checkmate in 3. So how, how should you begin? How should you start calculating? Well, let's make the normal move, the normal checking move queen to d4. Yes, I know a checking move is seldom the key of such problems. But let's see what happens if we chase the black king a bit. I myself often start thinking like that and it frequently bears fruit. So after white plays queen d4 check, black has to go king to f5. And now comes queen f4 check. Okay, now this is not a checkmate. But look at this position closely. The black king has just one escape square, and that is e6. You have to observe that this pawn on h5 has taken control of this g6 square crucially. And every other square is guarded by white's forces, either by this queen or by these pawns. So when you see this, this gives you an idea that somehow if you could induce the move e7, e6, somehow if you could induce e7, e6 here before going queen d4 check, then this would be a checkmate. So now your plan is that you want to go, you want to induce e7, e6 somehow and then go queen d4 check. After which when black goes king to f5, queen f4 will come with checkmate. So what we are looking here is a is a waiting move. We want to put black in a zook swamp, force him to play e7 to e6, and then go queen d4 check followed by queen f4 mate. Now let's try to think what could be a good waiting move here. If you haven't solved this yet, then pause this video right here and give it a good think. Look at the squares around the black king that needs to be controlled or perhaps needs to be blocked and try to come up with a good waiting move. Okay, so, so I hope you had a good think. Now is the time for me to divulge the solution. So the key here is king to c3. And this move doesn't threaten anything. It is simply a waiting move. And it puts black in a zook swarm. So for instance, if black goes e7 to e6 now, then white achieves exactly what he had planned. White goes queen to d4 check. Black has to play king f5 and now queen to f5, queen to f4 comes with checkmate. This effect is known as distant self-block. When black plays the move e7 to e6, it doesn't take away any flight squares immediately next to the king, but still proves to be an impediment eventually. So this is a checkmate. The black king is under checkmate now only because this escape square e6 has been blocked by this pawn. And this effect is known as the distant self block. Okay, now let's go back. After white has played the move king to c3, black is not obliged to push e7, e6. He can push c7 to c6 instead. What does white do now? Well, in this case, white goes queen, to e, queen into e7 check. And now the black king has two options, either to go to f5 or to go to d5. So when the black king goes to f5, then simply g4 comes with checkmate. Let's see what happens if black plays king to d5. Well then, e3 to e4 is checkmate. And, and once, again, once again, this is a distant self-block. This king is checkmated because it can't escape the c6 square anymore. 
which is blocked by his own pawn. And we also see why it is important to play king c3 specifically here. So king c3 is also important. You can't just play any waiting move because you need to have control of this crucial c4 square in this variation. This is a checkmate really because the square c4 is guarded. So let's go back once again. One last option that black has after king to c3 is pushing the pawn, pushing the e pawn two squares, e7 to e5. And now what does white do? White plays queen to c6 check. The black king again has two squares, f5 and e3 respectively. If black plays king to f5, white has queen g6 checkmate. Once again we see how this pawn on h5 is proving to be crucial by defending this or guarding this g6 square. Similarly, if black goes king into e3, then queen f3 comes with checkmate. Once again, this king on c3 is very well placed and is taking guard of these squares d2 and d4, facilitating the checkmate. So that was today's problem. Let's go back a bit. So yes, now that you have understood the solution, I would conclude by saying that when dealing with such problems where you see a lone king stranded in the middle and just few pieces on board, look not only at the squares immediately adjacent to the black king, but also the peripheral squares, so to speak. So you have this, have this king on e4. And you look at the squares immediately adjacent to it and you see that all the squares are well guarded but looking at these squares is not enough you also have to take note of the peripheral squares of these squares c6 e6 c4 and so on try to find ideas to control them or perhaps block them because in this case what we basically did was control them or block them with moves like king to c3, e6, c6, etc. So that's, that's it for today. I hope you found this instructive. We will meet tomorrow again. And tomorrow's problem, by the way, would be somewhat similar in spirit to this one. So if you are going through this video now, then hopefully it will help you crack tomorrow's position of the day. Well, thank you for listening. Goodbye and take care.